Hello, this is Hui. Welcome to watch my video C++ Programming on Linux. In this short video, we are going to discuss how to write a RabbitMQ consumer API using lab RabbitMQ library. Here is the standard Rabbit message flows. The producer generate a message, publish to the exchange. Exchange based on the type and the logic, routing the message to the corresponding queues. And the consumer consume message of corresponding queues. The Rabbit MQ consumer terminology. The term consumer means different things in different contexts. In general, in message, a consumer is an application or application instance that consume messages. The consumer consume from queue. So in order to consume message, there has to be a queue. The target queue can be empty at the time of consumer registration. In that case, first delivery will happen when the new message are in queue. In previous video of installing RabbitMQ for C++, we have installed two libraries. One is called labmqpcpp.so, another is called labrabbitmq.so. amqpcpp.so is a rab library which built on top of this library. All the basic function is inside of these libraries. So in this short video, we are going to demonstrate how to write a RabbitMQ API using this library only. So we create a simple C++ program called mqpconsumer.cpp. In order to use rabbitmq.so library, we have to include a header file amqp.h. And because we are using the TCP socket, so we include the TCP socket.h. So the usage of our program will be the program name amqp underscore consumer. And the first argument will be cost colon part number. And the second argument will be the queue name. And the third argument will be the consumer tag. The consumer tag. Every consumer has an identifier that is used by client library. So the consumer tag is identifier of consumers registered in the client library. So our program, after we get the input from the command line, step one will be parse and validate the command line syntax. First, we validate the argument one, host, colon, part, format. The argument two will be the queue name, and the argument three will be the consumer tag. We first split the argument one by colon. So after split into the vector, then the vector must be have size of two. And the first part is the house name. Second part will be the part number. And the argument two will be the queue name. And the argument three is the consumer tag. So. Step two, we have to set up a connection. First, instantialize a new connection. Use the MQP new connection. So new connection, we name it CONN. Type is connection state underscore T type. Second is instantialize a new socket. Instantialize a new socket of this connection. Return is the pointer of the socket. We name it socket. Third step is open the socket. Open the socket has three parameters, the socket and the house name, part number. After open the socket, will be the MPQ login, return is the RPC reply. So the first parameter will be connection. Second parameter will be the virtual host, my underscore V host. And the third parameter is maximum of channels. Next parameter will be the default frame size. And the next parameter will be the heartbeat. Next one is the method for authentication. If we choose the method plan authentication, the next one be login name and the password. The next one is open a channel. The channel in RabbitMQ is logical connection that share a single TCP connection. So we have a connection called a CON. We can open a channel, channel one. Open channel, first parameter is connection, second parameter is the channel ID. And 
Next step is declare queue and register consumer tag. This function will be used for declare queue, and this function start consumer and register consumer tag. For declare queue, first parameter is connection, channel ID, queue name from the command line. So passive is said no. Durable is zero means no. Exclusive no. And auto delete is no. And the queue argument, we choose the empty table. MQP basic consumer function start consume. The parameter of this function will be the connection, channel ID, queue name, and the consumer tag. This register consumer tag to our block local and then zero is no. No acknowledge yes. Exclusive is no and empty table argument. So after that, we can run our consumer. So when run our consumer, we make a loop and in each loop we create the return type, which RPC reply T type called RPC reply. We instantialize the envelope AMQP underscore envelope T type and uh, we release the buffer, which is our connection. After that, we will be run MQP consumer underscore message function, waiting for consumer a message or waiting a basic message delivery, and also allocate envelope object. If our return type is response normal, we just print our envelope. After print our envelope, we destroy our envelope release the memory allocated for envelope object. For the print envelope function, envelope object contains the following information, channel ID, consumer tag, delivery tag, exchange name, routing key, and if re-delivered, and also the message info. In order to print, we create a buffer memory, which is the envelope buffer size, we just defined 256 bytes, then we print all the information. Channel ID can be get from envelope dot. We have a channels, which is channel ID, consumer tag, and the deliver tag, exchange name, message, re-delivered, and the routing keys. So we print the channel ID, consumer tag, and the consumer target is the byte. So we set up on the memory of our buffer. We use MEMCPY to copy our consumer tag to our memory. Consumer target type is MQP underscore byte type. This type has two elements. One is the pointer of the memory, which is the byte, which is the pointer of memory of this consumer tag. And the second is Second is consumer tag dot the length with the size of a memory. And so we make a memory copy. We just print our buffer with title of consumer tag. And the deliver tag, using the envelope dot deliver tag. And we also reset the memory. We copy the exchange name byte, which is the pointer, and the length of exchange, which is the length of the exchange name to a buffer. And we just print our buffer of the exchange names. Same thing for the routing key. We reset our buffer, we copy the routing key to our buffer, and we print our buffer. And after that, we print a message using the envelope.message. So in general, for the message, it contains three category messages, the basic header information, special header information, and message bodies. For printing a message, we allocate a memory called message buffer size is the message buffer size defined 1024. And for the basic message header, if this flag is set, we have a content tab. If this flag is set, we have a content encoding. If a header's flag is set, means a message might contain the header entries, and we have delivery model, priority tag, correlation ID. Reply to flag, expiration flag, message ID, timestamp, type flag, user ID, app ID, class ID. So what we do, we check each flag set. We use the message properties binary and with our flag. If this is true, 
It means basic content type has been set. If basic content type length is greater than zero, we memory set our buffer and we make a copy our content type to the buffer and then we print our buffer. Same thing for all the other headers, content encoding. We reset the memory, copy memory, and print our memory for content encoding. Same thing for all the others. If property headers number entries greater than zero, it means we have a special header in our header message. So we make a loop for INTI equals zero to I less than property headers number of entries, and we make a loop. For each loop, we print the key and the value. Finish the loop, then we print the message body. We reset the buffer and we copy our message body to our buffer. The length is the message body dot len, and then we print our message body. This is for print our messages. Now we save our program. Compiling our program, and in order to test, we create another program called Publish. So we compile that too. Now programmer compiled. Here in another terminal, we can see currently our RabbitMQ broker don't have any queue. So in order to test our program, first we have to create a queue. So we use the publish program. First is a host name and the part number. Part number 5672. And first we test, we create a direct exchange. Type will be direct and the uh, routing key, we just say other. So the queue is a director other queue. Now we create a other queue. In order to test consumer and the publish, we make two terminal. Top terminal, we run the consumer. The consumer usage will be consumer. Host name, part number, and the queue is and consumer tag, which is named consumer1. So now our consumer started waiting for the message being enqueued. First is house name, part number, director, change, type is the director, and the routing key is the order. So now we start input the message. One, you can see our message been published to this queue and our consumer consumed the message. So what we got is a channel ID is number one. Consumer is consumer one. It is consumer one we registered and the deliver tag is one and our exchange is a direct exchange, direct exchange and the routing key is other and the routing key is other. Basic header message, content type, text plan and the content encoding we hard coded in our published program. Message body is this is the test message one. If we publish another message two, you can see our channel ID is not changed, consumer tag is not changed, deliver tag from one increase one became two. Exchange name is not changed, routing key is order, routing key is order. And our message body is the message two, and our message body receive is the message two. Hello, this is Hui. Thanks to watch my video. Hopefully, this is useful. It's going to be great to have your feedback.